What Salesforce certification should you focus on as an entry level developer to land your first role or to keep a job in this crazy market? Well, in this video, I'm going to be creating a tier list. Yes, another tier list of the Salesforce developer certification. Now, it's important to know this is completely subjective. I'm just using my experience as a hiring manager, somebody with 10 plus years experience and 18 certifications. So I've kind of seen a few certifications come through through in my day of Salesforce development. We'll only be focusing on the eight Salesforce developer certifications, but there are a lot of other certs that are important to be well-rounded as a Salesforce developer. And for each of the certs, I'll try to give my understanding of what the cert is, break down the reputation of it, and how useful the information is. And all of that kind of sums up to, will you be able to get a job if you get one of these certifications, right? Will people know it? Is the information useful? Can it carry you along in a Salesforce developer role? All right, let's go over our developer certifications here. And if you want to use this template, maybe have some fun ranking it yourself. There will be a link in the description for you to be able to access this tier. And of course, we've got lined up all of the developer certifications. And funny enough, Platform App Builder is in here. It's technically a developer certification, or at least it's in that section, but I'll get into that once I get to that certification. To start things off, let's take a look at B2C Commerce Developers. Now for this certification, I'm gonna actually put it in D tier, even though this one is really near and dear to my heart. Now I've done B2C Commerce projects, this was back when it was called cloud craze and Salesforce and bought the company, they tried integrating it. And now they even have a newer version of B2C commerce that is all built on top of the Salesforce platform, but it's a little convoluted and confusing to understand like where this certification sits and how it is helpful. So B2C commerce is a fully fledged storefront e-commerce website that you can build on top of the Salesforce platform. It can be integrated very heavily with each other. So you're like your Salesforce sales can then talk to this e-commerce site with products and people can go on it. But the hard thing or the complex thing is the actual B2C side, which is normally called storefront and SFRA is a completely different architecture language that you need to learn to be able to build out any of this stuff. So from my perspective, it is kind of hard to really get into B2C commerce. There's not really any prerequisites, but it takes a long time and a bit of studying to just learn how B2C commerce works. And it's not easy. There aren't really any SFRA sandboxes or B2C sandboxes available for you to jump into. Speaking of reputation though, B2C is a super niche community and once you're in, you're golden, but just getting the certification, I've seen this happen to other developers in the space, just getting the certification is not enough to get you a job. A lot of times you have to have that experience to actually be able to get a job and keep a job in B2C commerce. But once you have it, once you have that experience, you're going to stick with those jobs for a little while. And typically when you're in the B2C space, you are are going to be working at a consulting firm and you need to you know be aware of those challenges that are involved with that like billing hours and dealing with clients dealing with deadlines all of that stuff gets baked into the b2c commerce realm from what i remember about working with it now i'm almost tempted to maybe put it in c tier because the salaries are really good i've seen salaries all the way up to like 200k plus once you get a lot of experience but just starting out it can be really hard to break into the b2c realm and i hope salesforce does some opening up of this platform so that there's either additional training or you can get a sandbox very easily because right now it's a really closed off system. All right, next up, we're looking at Industries CPQ. And this one is kind of weird for me because I didn't even know this was a certification. Now, I'm not too big into the like industry clouds and stuff like that, but I really want to start learning it into getting an understanding of what are all the things that are in industry clouds because I've been hearing a lot 
of interest from recruiters and hiring managers about the different industry clouds that exist. So this is why I'm actually putting it in B tier, because just imagine you kind of scoop up this certification and you'll have people kind of knocking on your door, trying to see if you want to join their company. And a lot of those companies I have seen that they are consulting firms again. So running into a very similar situation as the B to C commerce. So let's talk about this CPQ developer certification. This is different than the, I guess, traditional or non-industry CPQ certification. So this one is all about the industry cloud, which was another acquisition from Salesforce with Velocity that got brought over. And it's all about kind of niche industries, I would say, energies, utilities, communications, media fields, all of those kind of have a separate Salesforce cloud that has a lot of pre-built things inside of it. And being an industry CPQ developer, you're going to obviously work, be working on CPQ. So configure price quote, that type of tool that is in there. Now, once again, I don't know much about it. So the reputation factor of it, I would probably put it kind of low, but in terms of just knowing the market and knowing that CPQ is pretty hot right now, it's kind of bumping it up a bit for, more for me and putting it into that B tier. Now, there are no prerequisites for taking this certification and at least when I did some LinkedIn and job searches there seemed to be a lot but I think some of them were getting it kind of mixed up or combined with the normal I'll say normal CPQ uh, certification that exists out there so mileage may vary but I feel like if you learn one you can learn the other one so getting this certification I don't think it will hurt you but it's definitely not one of the higher ones that we have the reputation and we kind of know for a fact right a fact that you can grab one of these and have recruiters and hiring managers in your DM pretty quickly. All right, let's take a look at another one that's pretty near and dear to my heart, JavaScript. Where is this going to land? Everybody has that love-hate relationship with JavaScript, and I'm actually going to put this one in A tier because there is that love-hate relationship with JavaScript, right? We have JavaScript is the backbone of a lot of web languages. So once you know the foundations of JavaScript, you're able to then transition over to many different areas of development, and maybe you'll be able to work with multiple different tech stacks in your organization. So getting a little carried away, the JavaScript Developer One certification is all about knowing the foundations of JavaScript and how they work with Salesforce development. Now this is not really a Lightning Web Component certification, but a lot of things have parallels in this cert with Lightning Web Components, right? Lightning Web Components have a lot of JavaScript that you can build around it. And unless it has changed recently, this is more of a JavaScript focus exam, but it has some LWC elements inside of it. So it's good to know both, but you will need to know JavaScript, at least the basics and some more advanced things to be able to pass this exam. So the JavaScript certification does kind of have a prerequisite at least to actually get the cert. You need to at least finish the Lightning Web Components Super Badge and then also take the exam and pass that before you are awarded the certification. With that being said, the content is very relevant, right? There's useful information. You learn JavaScript, you take this certification, you pass it. This gives you a good understanding of how JavaScript works. And I think from the reputation factor, a lot of hiring managers, recruiters, HR people, they know of the terminology like JavaScript and Java. They might get it mixed up sometimes, but they know about those different technologies. So hiring managers and recruiters will have an idea of what you know after taking this type of certification. And then you can roll that into other languages, especially if you're like a web developer, you can easily transition over into taking this certification and learning from there. Difficulty wise, if you've never touched JavaScript, if you haven't done any programming, you'll get crushed by this certification. I actually failed it the first time, but if you've been doing some web development and really brush up, take some additional classes or some courses, you start learning JavaScript a little bit better than focus on Lightning Web Components. This type of certification can really help you be a well-rounded developer. Taking a look at employability, I did see that this cert is a little mixed, right? There aren't a lot of 
of job listings specifically for a JavaScript developer one certification, that specific certification. But there are a lot of listings for Lightning Web Components and it's a little bit easier to kind of slide in there or educate a hiring manager on, okay, you have this certification. It kind of shows that you know Lightning Web Components a little bit more. This is the value that it brings from having this type of certification. Marketing Cloud Developer. Now, this is one that you hear a lot of buzz about all the time, but I'm not personally familiar with it. All that being said, though, I'm going to put it in S tier just because of how much buzz this certification gets and Marketing Cloud gets. I always see job listings for Marketing Cloud, and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Now, if you're brand new, Marketing Cloud, once again, is a separate application from like Salesforce core, right? When we talk about sales service and all of that stuff, marketing cloud is a marketing tool. And I'm, I don't think it's been fully moved on to the actual Salesforce core platform just yet, but please let me know in the comments if I am wrong about that. Now being a marketing cloud a developer is all about building on top of that platform. So you need to know things like SQL, which is different than SOQL APIs and how to do like dynamic personalization. There's a lot that can go into marketing cloud, which is really, really fun and interesting, but it is different from Apex. Mm. So just making that note for the overall like reputation, right? I think marketing cloud is pretty well known in at least the Salesforce space. It is a widely used marketing automation tool and the information will be useful, right? It's not like you're learning a proprietary language that you can't use anywhere else, kind of like B2C commerce, but we won't harp on that too much. Now, even though the information is useful, it can be a little difficult to learn marketing cloud because a lot of times you don't get direct access to like a marketing cloud sandbox and a way to learn it. So you will be in a very similar situation to B2C where you might need to start with a partner and grow with them as a marketing cloud developer. It can be very hard to learn and at least be hands on with marketing cloud before you've actually started at some sort of company. From the different opportunities that are out there, there are a decent amount of marketing cloud jobs. So that is really nice. This is a path that you can go down and kind of see a future in it, at least for a little while. But there is a prerequisite in the marketing cloud email specialist certification that you need to get before you are able to take this one. So just take note of that. But I think overall, especially if you're going down that marketing path, right, you grab this certification and it is one that will have recruiters and people in your DMs trying to scoop you up for different marketing cloud roles. And especially as Salesforce continues to add to marketing cloud, like with data cloud, which I think those two are connected, right? With data cloud and the different AI tools that are going to start being involved with marketing, this can be a great certification to pick up as your first developer cert and move more into those developer types of roles. Omni Studio Developer is another one of those Salesforce acquisitions that got moved onto the core platform. And Omni Studio, once again, is another one you hear a lot of buzz about. And if you're kind of seeing a trend here, if you hear a lot of buzz about something, then that generally means that there may be a lot of job opportunities going around for that sort of role. And at least ranking these based on like employability and kind of the, the reputation that goes along with these, I'm going to actually sit Omni Studio developers in the S tier. And that may just be anecdotal because I get a lot of recruiters reaching out to me to see if I have Omni Studio experience and if I'm an Omni Studio developer and I'm like, no, I've never looked at a flex card before. I have no idea what that is. So Omni Studio developers are basically working with the tool set that Salesforce has provided you. It's kind of like flows on steroids from my understanding. And it's a lot of like HTML, CSS, JSON and, and REST APIs kind of bundled into these packages that are more complex in flow. So you need a developer eye to kind of understand and break it down. Now, in terms of reputation, I think it's kind of known what Omni Studio is, 
but it's not the most widely known tool out there. I'm still gonna keep it in S tier because of the, the outreach that I get around it, but you know, feel free to disagree with me in the comments down below. So in terms of learning Omni Studio, I think it's a little bit better than Marketing Cloud where you can actually get a sandbox and start learning it, but I'm sure there is this kind of like steeper learning curve because there's a lot of different elements to it, right? You have JavaScript, you have HTML, um, some JSON, some REST. So you've got to kind of put a lot of things together to start to understand Omni Studio. But grabbing the certification, as far as I understand and as far as I'm concerned, is the job listings are there, people are reaching out. It is a, definitely a certification you should look into if you're looking to kind of find your next step or your next venture into Salesforce. And I normally get a lot of messages from consulting firms about Omni Studio and coming to work for their team or learning Omni Studio. So take that with a grain of salt. You might be working at a consulting firm. So just be prepared for everything that comes along with working and consulting. But I'm sure there are end user types of roles with Omni Studio out there as well. Oh, almost forgot to mention, there are no prerequisites for Omni Studio. I think there are some other certifications that are out there, but you can at least start to learn this one and grab this cert without needing to take anything else. All right, one of our favorite developer certifications, Platform App Builder. Where are we gonna put you? I'm actually gonna put you in C tier, and that's maybe a bit controversial. I'm sure some people will say D tier, and some people will say a platform app builder is a pretty well-rounded certification now i don't actually count this as a developer cert even though it's in the developer section but it just demonstrates you know how to design build implement applications on top of the salesforce platform so this deals a lot with some of the more complex declarative features so it'll talk a little bit about flows and permissions and how to set things up properly which is really good for a developer to know Know, especially if you're working on Salesforce core. There are a bunch of ways to solve your different problems inside of Salesforce and you don't always need to just jump to code right away. If you're a well-rounded developer, you should take a look at all the different solutions that are applicable and understanding your team skill set and then picking the best solution from there. So this is a good like building block to an architect type of cert. I wouldn't actually call this a developer cert. Last time I checked, there wasn't any code on this exam. And this is a well-known certification. A lot of admins and devs grab this certification and the information is useful, but I don't think it really packs that punch as some of the other certs on this list. You know, this is not gonna be one where recruiters are knocking down your door and calling you at 4 a.m. in the morning because you've just grabbed this certification. So there are no prerequisites for this exam, which is nice, but the employability is not really there from my opinion, at least when you specifically search this certification. Job list things don't specifically have looking for platform app builder, right? When you get in the interview, then you can explain the value of this certification and why it's good and how it makes you a well-rounded developer, but you're not really going to find dev roles with this cert just sitting on it. And you have to have this certification before you're able to jump into that specific role. So it can stay in C tier. You can stay there, buddy. It's okay. All right, our two heavy hitters coming up next, Platform Developer 1 and 2. For PD1, where am I going to drop this? Of course, well, I say of course, but it's in S tier. This is a really great developer certification to grab. If you have this certification, then you know the foundations of Salesforce development. You know a lot about Apex and how to develop on the Salesforce platform. This cert covers a lot of stuff like triggers, asynchronous Apex, error handling, and it can be a lot and it's pretty hard to get at least for your first try. A lot of people like to go the admin route first before tackling this certification so you're not learning so much about the Salesforce platform because it has some declarative aspects on it as well. Now for reputation, this one is pretty well known. You grab the PD1 certification and people do start knocking on your door. Difficulty is up there though, but this is one, if you grab it, it opens a lot of doors and opportunities for roles for you to jump into in the Salesforce ecosystem. There are loads of job listings for Salesforce developers and a lot of them do have the platform developer one certification listed on it as a requirement. So from the entry 
level standpoint, there are a lot of different opportunities to play with. And there's even like hybrid types of role where maybe you are an administrator and you want some development types of tasks while well, grabbing this cert will make you more confident and your employer more confident in assigning you these types of tasks. This is a really great cert to pick up. And of course I teach it in Cloud Code Academy. So I know the results that come from grabbing Platform Developer 1, which is why it's an S tier. Now let's talk about the big brother of Platform Developer 1, and this is actually Platform Developer 2. I'm gonna put this in A tier, and only because we're focusing on like entry level types of roles and maybe grabbing your first job. So if you have Platform Developer 2, that also means you have Platform Developer 1. And if you have maybe like three months, six months, a year of experience, and you have both Platform Developer 1 and 2, I'll start to have some questions on like, do you actually know the content or were you just cramming and trying to pass as many certifications as you possibly could? Now, with all that being said, the information inside of Platform Developer 2 is super, super useful in terms of building out more complex solutions. You've got integrations, batch best practices, trigger best practices, just everything in Platform Developer 1, even more complex to that next level, which is really, really important if you're trying to go down that developer path. Now, in terms of difficulty, this one is pretty hard. It's not recommended for you to take it if you don't have like, you know, three plus years, but I've known people who have done it earlier it just depends on what type of path you're taking and how much code you consume in one day it's totally possible to get it a bit earlier but once again as a hiring manager if i'm a hiring manager and i see you with both of these with just a few years of experience or a few months of experience i'm gonna have a few questions and question if you're legit or not now, in terms of jobs for PD2, there are a few that list and look for it specifically, but you can also lump in all of the PD1 jobs as well. Since you have that more advanced certification, you're even more, I guess, overqualified for that specific role. And this is another one just like PD1, where if you have it, people will be calling you in the middle of the night, trying to get you to look at this specific role and join their team, right? This is a really great certification to grab if you're trying to get to that next step. But I generally don't recommend this certification for entry level folks because it looks a little suspect. So here's the Walters 954 tier list. And of course, this is based on my opinions, but also my experience and what I have seen in the Salesforce ecosystem. Now, all of these certifications are not bad. I want to make sure to call that out and make sure that if somebody is maybe studying for B2C or even platform app builder, do not stop. But in terms of if you're entry level, if you're trying to get your first job and focus on one certification to get that will give you that edge, right? The S tier ones are the ones that I would personally focus on, right? If I was restarting today and then the other ones are supplementary, right? JavaScript is really great for LWC, PD2 if you're starting to move into more advanced Apex. But of course, maybe you're niching into Salesforce Industries and take a look at that. Maybe you've already been working in B2C or you understand some of that technology already then it's totally fine to grab that certification and especially platform app builder like what are you what are you even sitting out here for no i'm kidding it's a it's a really great well-rounded certification for salesforce core so don't feel bad if your cert that you're studying for is not in the s tier this is just how i rate the certifications if you're just starting out as a salesforce developer now of course if you agree disagree let me know in the comments down below if you like this video hit the like button if you didn't like this video well, I guess leave a comment and tell me what you didn't like about it. Now I'm just touching on certain things that are inside of these certifications, how useful the information is, what the reputation is like, but there are some certs that I think kind of like the S tier ones that are more important for Salesforce developers to get. And I actually break that down in this video over here, going over the top three certifications that Salesforce developers should get. Now, some of this may be admin or developer certs. You're going to have to watch to find out. As always, I'm Walters954. Thanks so much for watching, and I believe in you.